Hello everyone out there, this is Pastor Tony Galanti coming back to you again with Prophecy in Christ Above All, and uh, I want to thank all my viewers as well as all my subscribers. Uh, I want to thank you for viewing my videos, um, and uh, you know, if you get a chance, hit the likes button, hit the subscribe button, and pass this, uh, you know, pass this channel on to others out, out there as well too, because <clears throat> I stick to the scripture. And I don't budge from the scripture, all right? And that's what we need today, scripture and the truth of the scripture, okay? In love, okay? Well, today what I want to do is I want to talk to you about something. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about a comparison, okay? Between the rapture and the second coming of Jesus Christ today, okay? I mean, today I want to talk about it between the rapture and the second coming. What's the difference? What are the differences? And I'm going to go through a lot of scripture today. So, um, you know, stick with me because this is going to clarify a lot of stuff in your mind and your heart, okay? <clears throat> and I just want to let you know too, you know, <clears throat> you know, when you really look at th things in life, uh, I used to hear this uh, statement, you know, and I used to even use it, you know, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. You know, if we don't have the right theology, okay, we're finished, okay? What happens is people don't have the correct theology today, and they're getting driven in different directions, okay? And that's not very fair that you're getting the wrong theology, and I want to give you the right theology, okay? Because, you know, a chain, like I said, is as strong as its weakest link, and it's going to break, right, at the weakest link. And I don't want that happening to you, okay? A lot of people are looking for the second coming of Christ. A lot of people are looking towards the tribulation when they should be looking towards the rapture of Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the next event, okay? And this is what we need to do is look towards these things. I mean, look at what Scripture teaches us, okay? So think of it that way, okay? Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to give a comparison, okay? Um, the first comparison is going to be under the comparison of the rapture, okay? Christ will come for his own. What does that mean to come for his own? For his children, his saints, his believers, okay? And we can see that in uh, John chapter 14, verse 3, okay? So let me read that to you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, right, I will come again, okay, and receive you to myself, okay? To himself, okay, that where I am, there you may be also, okay. So that's talking about the rapture, okay. All right. Now, I also want to see if I can. I want to show you this too. Another verse about this, um, and it's going to take a little time because you know I'm going to. Like I said, I got a lot of scripture here, uh, and I don't want to. I know, lose you, okay? But stick to me, stick with me, and I promise you, you're going to get a lot out of this, okay? Okay, so it's First Thessalonians, okay? Chapter four, First Thessalonians, chapter four, verse seventeen, okay? And it says this: "And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up." What is that talking about? Caught up. That's the rapture. Okay, caught up together with them in the clouds, okay, to meet the Lord in the air, all right? So that's talking about the rapture again, all right? And what does it mean to be caught up? You see, that's the word rapture, all right, to be caught up, okay? The word rapture is a Latin word. A lot of people say, well, show me the word rapture in the Bible. It's not there, okay? But it's a Latin word describing this catching up, okay? We got the word raptura, all right? And we, we even get the word rapid in the English language, which means fast, boom, gone. In the twinkling of an eye, the Apostle Paul says, okay? And that's in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verse 17, all right, that I just mentioned. Now, let us go over to Revelation for a second here. Revelation 19, okay? Revelation 19, <clears throat> verse 14. Revelation 19, verse 14. This is talking about the second coming now of Christ, okay? 
not the rapture, but the second coming of Jesus Christ. Christ will come with, not for, but with his own, with his believers, with his saints, with his children, okay? Listen to this verse, okay? 1914 says this, and listen to this. And the armies which are in heaven, and we're going to be part of his army, armies, okay, in heaven, clothed in white linen, all right? After the rapture, we're going to be clothed with white linen in his armies, okay? White and clean. Um, we're following him on white horses. So when Christ comes back, we're going to be following him. He's going to be at the head on white horses. He's going to be on a white horse. We're going to have white horses as well, too, okay? And we're going to be coming back as an army. It sounds pretty powerful because this earth needs to be cleaned up. The, the man has destroyed a lot of things on this earth. And sin has destroyed a lot of things on this earth through man, okay? And obviously, you know who that work is originally comes from is the enemy, Satan himself, okay? Now, let's jump back to the rapture, okay? Um, the rapture, and like I said, I got to flip, flip around here because I want to show you the whole thing because this is basic Christian theology, basic this Christian theology, and people really need to know this stuff, okay? And uh, a lot of people don't know it, and it's really very unfair to you if you don't know these kind of things, okay? So, let's go to John, the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 14, John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, but let me tell you what it says here. The saints, believers, uh, are going to return with Christ to heaven, okay? That's the rapture again. We're going to return with Christ to heaven, Okay, and here's Jesus Christ speaking, okay, uh, in verse, uh, verses 1 to 3, and it says here, okay, this is Jesus saying, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me, okay? In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so... I would have told you, okay? For I go and pre to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That's the rapture again, right? That where I am, there you may be also. Okay, so that's Jesus Christ talking about the rapture again. Okay, now, <clears throat> um, if we go to, um, let's flip over to Acts, the book of Acts. Okay, chapter, uh, let's see here. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Okay, <clears throat> and this is talking about, guess what? Take a guess. The second coming of Christ. Okay? Here it comes. Okay? Um, and they also said, men of Galilee, okay, this is the angels, all right, speaking to the disciples after Christ resurrected into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father. Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? Okay? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Okay? So what is that talking about? That's talking about the second coming. All right? So, you know, Jesus is going, he's going up, and he's coming, he's, he's coming back, but we're going to be with him, all right? All right, we also can go over to the, an Old Testament book, and that Old Testament book is Zechariah, all right, Zechariah, 
chapter 14, chapter 14, verse 4, okay? And this is also talking about the second coming of Christ, okay? And Christ's return to the earth, okay? Um, chapter 14, I almost read you chapter 13, <laughs> okay? And in that day, this is the prophet Zechariah speaking, and in that day his feet, talking about Christ's feet, will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem, okay? On the east. And the Mount of Olives will be split in the middle, okay? From the east to the west by a very large valley. So Christ is going to split the Mount of Olives the minute he touches foot. We're going to be with him, behind him, okay? So that half of the mountain will move toward the north and the other half toward the south, okay? So that's talking about Jesus Christ and we're coming, you know, to his return to earth and he's going to, you know, he's going to touch down on the Mount of Olives and split it in two. Okay, as I just read in Zechariah uh, chapter 14, verse 4. Okay, all right. Then we have, let's go back to the rapture again. Okay, rapture. Uh, rapture. Let me tell you about the rapture now, about this part. The rapture, nations are not judged yet in the rapture. We're going to be, we're, as saints, we're going to be taken up, and they're gonna, the, the nations on the earth are not going to be judged yet. Okay. But when we go to the second coming and we're going to be with Christ, coming back with him, okay? Now we need to go to Matthew. Uh, let me flip over to Matthew here. Okay. Matthew 25, uh, verses 31 to 46. I'm not going to read any of it because it's pretty long, okay? But it's 25 to 46. Uh, I mean, 25, excuse me. Let me take that back. Matthew 25, 31 to 46, okay? Um, so 31 to 46 tells us um, that the Son of Man is going to come with the angels and so on and so forth, and it's going to talk about, it's, he's going to be judging the nations, okay? Christ is going to come and judge all the nations, okay? Now, if we go to, let's go back to the rapture again. I know we're going back and forth. But you got to realize this. You know, this is what you have to. I'm trying to break this thing down to show you they're both different. The rapture and the second coming of Christ is different. A lot of people are looking for the tribulation. No, there are things headed towards the tribulation, absolutely. All right? But we're not in the tribulation. And the tribulation is not going to come first. We're going to be taken out first. For seven years, we're going to be taken out. There's seven year tribulation. We're going to be out with the Lord. Okay? And then after that, we're going to come back. Okay, um, but let me go to 1 Thessalonians. Okay, 1 Thessalonians, um, chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. This is talking about the imminent, the rapture is imminent, Okay. And what does imminency mean, okay? Um, a lot of people in the past used to say imminency means it can happen at any time, okay? The real meaning of imminency means it's, a, it's going to, uh, how do I say it? It's about to happen. There's a little bit of a difference of, of logic in that. It's about to happen. It's coming. In other words, I don't know if you've ever experienced some things in your life, whether they were positive or negative. Uh, I've seen, you know, uh, some, uh, let's put it this way. I, I remember I had a dog once, okay? And it ran out into the street and I saw this car coming, right? And I knew the car didn't see the dog. And the dog was circling around, a little collie, you know, circling around. And I was praying, I was praying immediately and saying, I hope the dog is on the, because it was going through between the road and the grass, the road and the grass, you know. Uh, it was like the little collie was trying to corral something, you know. 
But anyhow, what happened was I said, I, I, I pray and hope to God that that dog does not go out into the road because it's going to get hit by this car. And I thought it was imminent and it happened. And it really, really upset me. But what could you do? That's the way life was, you know, and, and, and is. Things happen, you know. But what I'm trying to point out here is the word imminent means about to happen. You see things coming together. It's logical. You see the car coming. You see the dog spinning. And you, but it's about to happen. You, you know, it's like a kid playing in the street. And you know people, sometimes people don't even look. They just fly down the road. It's a real dangerous situation. And, you know, you got to you gotta be alert to that to get that kid out of the street, you know, or somehow get in the, you know, get in the street to, um, how do I say it, alert the car that you're there because that car may not, you know, a person in that car may not see a little kid. They may see you, you know. So you got to jump for it, you know. But anyhow, imminency means it's about to happen, okay. It can happen right now, all right. It can happen even before I get finished with this video that you're seeing. It can happen anytime, okay. So what is it, what, what is First Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 to 4 say, okay? Okay, it says here, now, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, now as to the times and the epics, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you, okay? For you yourselves know full well, okay? In other words, they knew, you don't have to have a, I don't have to write it to you, you know, full well, okay? For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. Even Jesus talks about that in the, old, in the uh, Gospels. It's going to come like a thief in the night, okay? While they are saying peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them suddenly like birth pangs upon a woman with child, okay? And they shall not escape, all right? So, there we go. That's the imminency. In other words, it's going to happen. The church is going to be raptured up, right? The bride of Christ is going to be raptured up. The true believers, the saints, you know, whatever you want to call us, but we're actually called saints, Okay, the brothers and sisters in Christ are going to be taken out. Okay, and boom, it's going to happen. And you know what? It's not. Nobody can stop it. You know, nobody can stop it. No arrogance of all science can can stop it. Okay, there's so much evolution out there, and they're so arrogant. It's arrogant to think this is 50 million years old. This is 20 million years old. They don't even know what 20 million years is. You know, a little rock, 20 million years old. Let me tell you something. You had 20 million years of weather on that rock, you wouldn't have a rock left. You know? It's, it would be gone. Think of that. Okay? The weather would wear it out and wear it down. Okay? So, the rapture is imminent. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Boom! Like a thief in the night. When nobody expects it. Okay? And then if we go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. Excuse me. Let's go back to the Gospels here. Okay, here we are. Luke chapter 21. Got to move some pages here. <laughs> I mean, I really want to show you that this comes right out of the Bible. I could sit here and say, oh, this is it. I mean, I could put it up on, you know, a billboard or whatever and read it off. But no, I'm not going to do that kind of stuff, you know. Um, okay, Luke 21. Okay. Verses 11 and 15, and this is talking about the second coming of Christ, okay? And this is talking about awaits for prophetic signs, okay? Everybody's looking for a sign. Sign of this, a sign of that, sign of this. You know, when things happen and events take place, you can, you can, you can go on the scripture and see what's really happening. That's one thing. But people are trying to throw signs around. Uh, tomorrow there's going to be an earthquake over here. Tomorrow, uh, you know, you're going to make a million dollars. What is this? What is this prosperity gospel ridiculousness? There's nothing to do with the gospel. Nothing at all. Okay, please. Jesus Christ died on a cross 
and you're worried about a million dollars? Come on. Put it in your heart to understand what Jesus did for you, you know? Okay. Now, we go to Luke chapter 21, verses uh, 11 and 15. Okay? 21 of verses 11 and 15. So, Jesus is talking about things to come. Second coming, of course. And there will be great earthquakes. Okay? And in various places, plagues and famines. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Okay? Those things are already happening. But you know what? They're going to be worse, much worse, at the second coming of Christ. Much, 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 much worse. Okay? Okay. These are going to be coming in the, in the, in the poly, around the tribulation kind of thing. Okay. And you go to verse 15 now. For I will give you utterance and wisdom which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. Okay? You're going to have people dying for their faith, possibly before the rapture, possibly and definitely in the rapture. And God, Christ is going to give them wisdom to refute them. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to try to take their life. Because Christ wants you to refute people that are wrong. And this is something I'm seeing in Christianity today. Nobody's refuting falsehood of the scripture. False, you know, I mean, there's no falsehood in the scripture, but people speak falsehood and nobody refutes it. It's ridiculous. In fact, it's sinful if you know the scripture. You need to refute it. Okay? Okay. Now, um, let's get into the, into, back into the rapture again. Okay? We're almost finished here. Uh, before the day of wrath. Okay? The rapture is going to take place before God dumps his wrath on this earth. Okay? And we're going to go to uh, 1 Thessalonians again. Uh, there's going to be two verses here. 1 Thessalonians, verse 10. We'll start with, okay? 1 Thessalonians, verse 10. Uh, and it says here, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom... He raised from the dead, that is, Jesus Christ, who delivers us from the wrath to come. If you're a true believer in Jesus Christ, a true believer, you have been delivered from the wrath to come on this earth. You're going to be with him, okay, in heaven. You're going to be with him in heaven. We're going to, we're going to, believers are going to be with him in heaven. I'm going to be with him. I want to see you there. You're going to be with him, and we're going to be with him in heaven. And the thing is, this wrath is going to be dumped on this earth like you've never seen before, or can even imagine on this earth. Okay. And Jesus Christ is going to be dumped. He's going to he's going to do it. Okay. Now, if you go to ver uh, chapter um, five, okay, of First Thessalonians, okay, verse nine, we could see something else. Now, as to the love of the brethren, oh, excuse me, read the wrong verse. Okay, uh, here it is. For God has not destined us, okay? He has not destined believers, Christians, true Christians. But God has not destined us for what? Wrath. It's totally out of God's will for us to even experience any bit of God's wrath, okay? But, for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So we're not destined to wrath. Okay? Okay. Salvation is the thing that Christ wants for us. And he wants us to keep growing and growing and growing in salvation. And how do we grow and grow in salvation when we're looking at the rapture and the second coming of Christ? We witness to people. We bring things. We bring the scripture to people. We talk to people about God's word. And you know what? You may not know God's word a lot. You know, maybe you've been, you know, not really digging into the scripture. But you know what? You have a spiritual gift if you're a true believer. You need to utilize that spiritual gift. And if you know just one verse, I knew, I, I've heard of, 
one 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 person was very how do I say it to you? Real young, but he only knew one verse, John 3.16, and that's all he said. John 3.16, John 3.16, not that John 3.16, but for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, okay? All right? Um, and I'm not talking to you about, you know, I heard a minister over the internet a couple of days, a couple of days from last week, who says, faith is action. No, it's not action. It's having your full trust and faith or, or belief in Christ. And then it causes action, okay? Because if, you, if, he, if that minister knew the Bible, and he's telling thousands of people, if that minister knew the scripture, all right, Hebrews 11.1, 1, okay? Now, faith is a substance. Remember, it's a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So what is the substance? It's faith. And God is giving you and me and everyone else that substance of faith. And Jesus even says if you have the faith of a mustard seed, the size of a mustard seed, which if he's talking about something physical, there's a substance to it. There's something to it. God has given us all a substance, uh, uh, you know, a, a faith, okay, small, a small amount of faith, okay, with to us it's small, but it overcomes a tremendous amount. That's all we really need. A little bit of faith is powerful to move mountains, Christ says, okay? All right. So it doesn't matter if you, f you think your faith is weak. It's not weak. It might be small. Everyone's faith is small. You need to exercise it and grow it. Okay? Now, um, second coming. Let's go back to second coming. Um, and what is the second coming, uh, you know, with uh, this wrath? Um, the second coming happens after... The day of wrath, okay? So Christ is he's going to drop the, the day of wrath. He's going to, we're going to have the, this earth's going to have the day of wrath on it, and Christ is going to be coming. Judgment on, judgment and recompense for every type of evil. And God is going to judge sin for every type of evil towards the believers. And this could be the Old Testament Jewish believers as well as the new believers today. He's going to judge all that. Okay. Torah's believers, some of us are going through a lot more strain and stress as Christians in our faith, and some of us may not. But you know what? Doesn't mean tomorrow you're not going to do that. You may go through a great deal tomorrow. Okay. So you got to be ready. Okay. So, like I said, all this, all these things that we've gone through, you know, because of uh, unbelievers, and sometimes even believers do this, unfortunately, okay? Uh, towards believers, um, we have to understand it all revolves around the cause of Christ, okay? The cause of Christ. If you got a person who claims to be a Christian and he's jealous of you for some crazy reason because he's your brother in Christ and you're his brother in Christ, and yet he acts like he's jealous, what do you think that is? If he tries to make you stumble, what do you think that is? Okay? It's wrong. But I'm talking about unbelievers trying to do this to us. You know, I've, I've, I've said, I'm just going to end with this. There are times a believer shows that they're a believer, and all of a sudden people start acting more worldly in front of them. You know? I saw that. I've seen it many times. They start cursing up a storm. They start getting nasty. They start storing up, and because they're all because you're a Bible person, you're a believer in Jesus Christ. They do that on purpose. It just churns them the wrong way when it's supposed to churn them to faith in Christ. Okay? All right. Lord bless you. Okay? Hit the likes button. Uh, send me a comment and subscribe. Okay? And send, you know, tell others about my, my, my channel. Okay? Because I stick to the scripture and I don't play games, okay? All right. All right. I'll be coming out with another video pretty soon. All right. Lord bless you. Have a great week, okay? Bye-bye now.